All right, here we got an update for the M Balfouris. I haven't been doing updates on these guys because honestly, it's it's easy clickbait for me because every time I put one of these videos up, I do get a lot of interest in it, which is great, but I don't like putting anything up if there's nothing to really talk about. And as you can see, they've been much more shy lately. I haven't caught many out and about. Uh, the most I've seen out in one time is five. So again, I'm assuming there's still nine in here, but I'm not sure. So the rehousing that's coming up very, very soon, most likely this weekend, will be interesting because this will be the first time I've seen all of them out in several months. Um, if you look around and I'll, when I do the rehousing, I'll make sure I catch some of this on camera. I don't want to jiggle it around too much right now, but behind all that webbing, there are tunnels that go underneath into the dirt and you can usually see several of them back there, but they've been a bit more reclusive. Um, let's see if there's any, um, there you go. They've been tossing molts out right and left. And as you can see, they're pretty good size. That water dish there is about two and a half inches across the short way and it easily spans that. So I'm guessing they're three, three and a half inches, some of them. But uh, they still appear to be doing great. I throw crickets in, and you see just the webbing just pulsates with all these guys bolting, grabbing crickets, and retreating back into the webbing. It's really kind of neat to watch, but it happens very, very quickly. And honestly, when I'm feeding, I'm usually worried about dropping the crickets in and counting how many crickets I drop in and haven't gotten the camera out. But I'll try to get one of those feedings pretty soon. But again, I haven't done too many updates on these, or I didn't do one last month because there really hasn't been a heck of a lot going on. And I've been kind of in a holding pattern with these guys until I got the new cage in. But in a moment, I will have the video for the new cage, which hopefully will look amazing. Yeah, I'll just set that up really nice because it'll end up being kind of the centerpiece of my collection. And then we'll do the rehousing. I don't think I'm going to live stream the rehousing because A, I have four kids uh, four dogs and the house is usually a bit of a zoo and B I honestly don't know if I can trust my mouth if things don't go well um, I try to keep it very professional on my YouTube channel I am a teacher but I slip up here and there and I really don't want to uh, have something come out live that I normally wouldn't want I know a couple people will giggle that have talked to me in person but um, it's I just really need to be focusing on what's going on and not worried about the fact that there's a live camera on me so we'll see May, maybe I'll set one up maybe I won't but I definitely will be recording the whole thing, and I got another camera going just in case. So there we go, M. Balfouri update. This will be probably the last one before the rehousing that will come most likely tomorrow, Saturday. I'll get this video up, uh, edited and up in a minute with the enclosure, and I will shoot one that shows some of the decorations I'm going to put inside. But again, this, this should be a lot of quote-unquote fun moving all these guys. Yeah. All right, this is our third take because my house is a zoo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my excitement is completely gone. I'm going to try to sound enthusiastic. So I'm excited to have this Lorax enclosure I ordered online. I forgot what I said in the last video, so this probably won't be as good as the one I just shot. Um, I have people that have been waiting for my M Balfouri rehousings will be very excited because this should be the enclosure I'm using for the rehousing. I was wavering back and forth between getting this one and the Jamie's enclosure, enclosure and it basically came down to the Lorex because uh, originally the only issue I had with the Lorex enclosures was that they used wire mesh vents and my tarantulas chew right through them, terrestrials will chew right through them all and that was a huge issue. I had to replace all the ones I had and so the two enclosures that I currently use are completely replaced uh, in, uh, vents on them. However, it was brought to my attention that they started doing drilled vents, which is huge for me because I like the drilled vents better than the wire vents or any other type of plastic vents. So it makes them so I can use them for terrestrial tees. And I still have a bunch of cages I want to have made. So that meant um, Lorax, because they do custom work, I could use them to possibly do other cages. So I wanted to try one out. So I decided to order from them because they had the size I needed. And if this looks as good as I hope it's going to look, man, this is really well padded. If this looks as well as I hope it's going to look, I will be having more cages done because I still have arboreal cages I'd like to get made and I need somebody that can custom make them. Shut up for a minute and get this one out of here. If I remember correctly, the last one I ordered was completely wrapped in bubble wrap as well. I still have some of the in the garage, too. All 
I'm not just saying, oh, I like this better actually. Last one was a ton of bubble wrap. This is actually the size of the enclosure. I don't know if it's gonna slide out of here. The other side of the box. Is it big at all? It is now. I'm just gonna light a little bit. Right way around. There we go. Oh, that'd be great if I break it before I even use it. So obviously a bit bigger than the original enclosure. The original enclosure, I believe, was uh, 11 by 9 by 9. I'll double check the thing on that. This one is 12 by 12 by, I think, 21. Let me double check. Let me take that <clears throat> Oh, but 24. So a foot by a foot by two feet, about a 11 gallon, 12 gallon, I think. Very, very nice. Double half passes. Ooh, I like this. This is new. Well, damn here to keep from getting out. And what I will likely do in a moment is after I cut this one, I'll break out some of the stuff I'm going to um, put in. For substrate this time around, I am going to break out cocoa fiber, which I haven't used in a long, long time. Basically because it is a species that needs to be kept dry and the cocoa fly fiber is very light and fluffy And this is gonna be a cage that when I feed them I will probably be picking it up and taking it out to feed them and the topsoil that I usually use I love it, but it's very very heavy so that will allow for it to be a bit lighter So I don't kill myself moving it. There you go. Beautiful cage. I mean, this is actually I like the design of this actually better than the, uh, the Older ones very square the older ones uh, had the wrapped back very, very nice. So I'll definitely be trying them out for more enclosures. I got some, again, some ideas for arboreal custom enclosures that I want to get made up and they'll be great for that. So I'll go ahead after this one, I'll shoot another video of some of the stuff I bought to put inside of it. I'm going to do something a little more interesting, I think, for this one than I normally do. But there we go. Excellent, excellent cage. Lax plastics do a beautiful job on that. Did some custom work with it. This was actually an enclosure style they had originally with the aluminum beds in it, and I had this one custom made with the drilled holes in it, but beautiful job. Okay, so for the third part of the video, here are some of the things I picked up. Uh, I went to Petco online, which I get a lot of good deals from them. Usually you can find most of the stuff for like 40% off from what it sells for in the actual uh, brick and mortar stores, and you get the free shipping on it. So I ordered a bunch of stuff. I kind of have a theme I want to go with, with uh, for these guys for this enclosure a little more complicated than what I normally do in my enclosures uh, Because basically it's going to end up being a centerpiece of my collection So what we have here is the main part of it is going to be this Resin sculpture of driftwood here with the little plants on it a little heavier than I would have wanted But I weighed it. It's still less than a pound and what I'm going to do is Put some supports in the bottom I'm going to fill that hole because I don't want them getting up inside of it and put some supports on the bottom like perhaps one of these pieces of driftwood or two of these pieces of driftwood to hold it into the substrate so that if they do dig underneath it, it's not going to tip over and be a crushing um, danger or anything of that nature. But uh, it's actually a lot lighter than it looks and it's going to be in the back. I might even hot glue it to the back so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I bought a bunch of these little pieces of driftwood, which I'm going to, some of them are going to get glued on here to kind of make some places for them to web and hide to. Because if you see um, what these guys can do to an enclosure, you give them a little extra height and some things to anchor to, they are going to web the heck out of it. And you'll see um, in the previous video how much they've already gone and webbed that old enclosure. So I want to give them room to do it. And I have another whole bag of them over here. And then I don't know if this one's going in. I wanted something to look kind of deserty. Um, again, I don't normally go all out decorating my enclosures because it really does nothing for the tarantulas. It's more just for display and to make it look pretty. And when people come by the house and look at it, they go, oh, that's nice. Um, these aren't particularly sharp, but I do worry about fall danger. So I don't know if I'm going to use them and they're a little bit hard. So kind of cool looking it would look nice in there but i don't think it's going to make it in and then the other one i picked up which is definitely not going to make it and i'm leaving this to the boxes this one here because these things 
are sharp. I don't know if they come in. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. There we go. Yeah, those that, that's just got a little impaled T written all over it. So this unfortunately won't make it in. It would have looked nice. Would have given it something to web to, but it's not going to make it in. So hopefully what I'm going to do in a couple minutes is get out my glue gun and make, devise some kind of way to put this stuff together in a way that it looks pretty and most importantly that it's safe. And if I don't think I can do it in a way that's safe, it won't make it in there. Having watched their burrowing habits, I mean, I know they're going to burrow all around this. So I think the trick for something like this is to make sure that it won't just cave in and collapse. So that's why it'll have the supports underneath it. So that if they do dig, what will happen is um, it'll basically just start tipping over. But I am going to put it probably right against the back so it won't have any place to go there. And I made even hot glue, put a couple dowel, uh, dollops of hot glue in the back to make sure it just doesn't go anywhere. But this would be the centerpiece of it, and I'll be encouraging the burrowing around it. Oh, and I also obviously got the cork bark rounds to put in there, although this has got some stuff on it. I gotta go clean these off. And yeah, the cork bark, when you get it, just make sure, you know, a toothbrush, and uh, not an old used one, a new one, does wonders for cleaning some of the crap off these when you get them, because sometimes they come in, I wonder what the heck they've done with them. They've got, you know, this looks like almost like a cocoon was ripped off. I've had some come with mold on them. But I'm gonna trim these up, because the idea is gonna be to give these guys a place right off the bat to hide, but then also some stuff to uh, web to, and some anchors for webbing. When they get in there and start making the place their own. And I'm hoping what we'll have is this thing completely festooned with webbing after a few months. So we'll see how that goes. So anyway, that's it until the big rehousing, which will probably be tomorrow morning. Still not sure how that one's going to go. I'm trying to picture it in my head because knock on wood, I've had great luck with the single rehousings. But there's going to be nine of these guys and they're all like three, three and a half inches now. So could be an adventure. So rehousing coming soon. But there we go. There's all the materials for the new and Balfouri communal setup. I'll be working on this this morning. I'm also, for the substrate, we'll be using a combination of mostly uh, cocoa fiber. I'm not a big fan of this stuff. I know everybody likes it. That's fine, and I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from using it. Just personally, the whole rehydrating and drying out thing, just it's pain in the butt. I spent all of yesterday uh, baking it in the oven, but I do like the fact that it's good for burrowing. It's fluffy. And it doesn't weigh as much because this cage is going to end up weighing a ton. So I'm mixing that with peat, um, a little bit of topsoil, and some sand to kind of give a more naturalistic look to it. So that'll be the substrate. I'll be filling this one up in a minute to make sure I have enough. But uh, tomorrow morning, that'll be the big day. So coming soon, M. Balfouri Communal Rehousing.